But as you can see with the HD camera, I've got a new haircut, freshly done, just now from the barbers. It took all but of what two and a half hours to get it done anyway, you know. I've I've been in a bit of a weird situation. I've been very, very um spoiled with the hip barbers I've been going to lately, right? I've been avoiding going to any kind of, you know, quote unquote traditional Caribbean or African barbershop because I don't want the drama. The ones that are near me where I live in East London are, you know, for the most part quite um lax with their timekeeping to say the least, right? So I've been trying to move around Nim, um, you know, jump around from barber to barber, try and find the perfect spot for me. But you know what always end up happening? I always end up going back to the source, going back to what I know better, what I know best, sorry. And what I know best is a really dodgy looking Caribbean or African barber shop with 17 guys in there. You're not sure who the barber is because there's only one guy cutting, everyone else is sitting down talking about politics, drinking Guinness right you, it's just an absolute mess it stinks like dudes in there there's guys in the background somewhere shouting there's if there's one girl that walks by there it's like putting a bloody fish in the sea of piranhas right it's an absolute horror show but they still manage to get trims like this out of there right they still manage to cut your hair in this sort of fashion it's amazing it's amazing honestly like even this barber that i go to the guy that cuts my hair there he could not be more disinterested. He could, he could, his body language is like the opposite of somebody that wants to make money, right? But somehow he manages to get this trim done. And you know what? He does it all with one razor, with one, um, with one flipping machine, right? For the most part, he does the edges with the little, you know, with a little wow clip of the gray one that everyone uses. But for the fades and stuff, he uses one machine, one machine, and just, he just puts on, um, I don't know, like a, a two clipper or something or a free clipper. And that's it. That's how he does the phase with that machine and a bit and a couple of clippers just like clipping. Boom, 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 boom. He never brushes the side of your hair. You know, usually most places you go to there, they say brush the side of your hair. They line it up. They give you, you know, they kind of, you know, they give you a bit of a bowl cut. And then from there, they start fading. He doesn't do any of that shit. He just goes straight in there and just starts fading. And somehow, as you can see from the video, if you listen to the podcast app, it's going to be irrelevant. But my, my, my fade looks amazing. It's not Odell Beckham level, but... It's the best I can do, you know, living in the area that I live in. But yeah, um, <laughs> what an incredible experience, man. I, I walked in there at like, what, half seven? No, I, no, let me talk half seven. I walked in there at 6.50 and I left at half past eight. And I was the first person in the seat. Like, I, I when I walked in, the seat was free. Half past eight. Six, seven o'clock to half past eight. And not because the haircut took long, because they were just faffing around, innit? Like, going outside, popping out, getting a munch, getting a this, getting a that. It's like, God almighty, man. You'd think, like, you know, you want to just, like, I'm moving the microphone a little bit, so please bear with me. You'd think you just want to chill and wait to finish a shift and then go and do your stuff, but nah, not not these guys. Not these guys at all. One second, let me move this around again. Let me go see if that works properly. This shield thing's a bit annoying, isn't it? It's not the easiest thing to do, but anyway, let's see. Hopefully this works from now on, but yeah, hopefully the sound improves. For those of you listening, let me know. If the sound is better this way, um, I'm using a pop shield. Hopefully, there's no more pop. pop, pop, pop. But yeah, apart from that, what's been going on? Um, it's been nice. Life's been good. I've been training pretty well. Running a lot. Running is going quite well. I'm enjoying get, hitting the streets again. Um, I need to get some new running shoes though. My shoes are literally on their last legs. I really want to get those new um Nike Four Percenters that everyone's been talking about or that have been featured all over the interwebs. I'm sure you guys have seen me talk about them a few times here. The Nike vapor what is it called next percent something like that right next percent vapor what is it vapor fly next something right next percent you know that new one that come out is that squishy soul all fluorescent greeny that's the one mama mia look at that all right cool let's find this shoe right so this is the shoe that i want to get right this one hope you guys can see it on the screen that's loading up this is from the nike site bloody hell and i think it's like 230 quid right so probably the most you know luxurious of running shoes that you know if if um, mercedes made running shoes did these would be it right the fucking tesla of running shoes in that regard or uh, so yeah they, they look amazing though right there's no way you can't not want these i think they came out in limited quantities first to begin with they see them out to loads of athletes which is a really cool uh, way of doing stuff they didn't give them to loads of influencers who actually run they get i'm sure some influencers got them but for the most part i saw a lot of actual runners giving them which makes it be known to me that maybe the influencer or the energy marketing team at nike 
isn't as cool as it seems and they have different divisions so they have somebody for like you know lifestyle pieces somebody for sports specific stuff because you know if i'm a i'm an actual runner i actually run like you know 10 50 miles a week i don't actually want to i don't care if this like cool hipster dude is wearing them i want to see cool hipster dude wearing cool hipster shoes right i don't want to i want to be influenced by yeah cool hipster dude should be wearing like you know sakai nike right he shouldn't be wearing these so i'm happy that they kind of been able to split it but that said i'm not i'm not against seeing a cool hipster dude wear these and make them look good in an outfit but for the most part i actually would like to ride in these because they look really comfortable um but yeah so this is a nike uh nike zoom x vapor vapor fly nike next percent the worst name ever right i'm assuming every bit of the name is part of the technology the zoom x the vapor fly the next percent but jesus christ man figure out how to like name that's one thing apple and nike right they make amazing product but they can't name shit for they can't name items for shit right the other phone definitely came out the other day the iphone 11 pro like what max pro stuff's like what the fuck are these names man just i don't know mix mix them up but anyway this is um from the nike site it says here the nike zoom x vapor max <laughs> vapor fly max next percent is the best what is the far uh, is the fast you've never seen what is the fast you've never seen or felt before what kind of sensors is that the nike zoom x vapor fly next percent is the fast you've never seen or felt before by combining our most innovative technologies nike zoom x foam and vapor weave material is the fastest shoe we've ever made scroll down to learn more about the future racing shoes so these are i think most of you guys are aware of like running styles but for or running shoes preferences but for the most part they do recommend you have one shoe to training and one shoe to run your race in quote unquote um i had a couple of pairs i did the same sort of thing for but you know as time progresses you end up trying to you end up wearing the same shit all the time your running shoes be, your training shoes become your race shoes races become your training shoes but you should actually have them split so that when it comes to a race you've got something light comfortable on maybe with a bit more padding that you can actually go um really hard in and then you've got training shoes that you don't necessarily give a shit about but you can kind of get the mileage in there for the most part no actually that was the other way around you want something a little bit more chunky for your day-to-day -day. if you want to wear that if you want to wear a zero drop shoe you're more than welcome to but in your race day i would wear like a zero drop shoe you know like with no kind of elevation on the hill or the forefoot so then i'd be concerned on my gait or making sure my foot placement is where it should be and then i'll be set for the entire races but that's what you kind of want to do so i'm assuming this by this this nike zoom x vaporfly next percent is the is the kind of the the perfect shoe for you to race in once you got that race started and all that malarkey but they look incredible man look at that you got are you on track they look amazing look at that and the tread looks really nice I'm a real, I'm a big fan of these, and I actually like the fact that I've mentioned it in another post later on. But I like the fact that in the actual image of the website, they've got a pair that's actually been worn or been squished about, right? I like the fact they're not actually just always putting up pristine shoes online. It's a little touch for most people won't matter, but it looks like these have been worn a bit or they've been tried on at least, or it's a pair that the model will and they just re relace them and put them up on the website, right? Took some obviously into some beautiful pictures, but. Because, you know, their shoes, you want they want to be lived in. I don't want to see something that looks so sterile, doesn't have any life in it. I want to see it worn a bit, like given a bit of character. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, they look amazing. And if you click shop now, I'm pretty sure they're at $2.30. I might get them. I might get them when I get paid next month or the end of this month, probably. I probably might get them. They're $2.40. Oh, I probably won't get them. They haven't got my size. <laughs> so, yeah, my size isn't available, but I recommend you check them out. Uh, Nike Zoom X Vaporfly, next percent one of the best running shoes out there for me in my opinion personally i just i love them i'm mean, again maybe they're gonna i'm surprised they haven't put any more colorways actually they've really stuck with this colorway for a long time usually nike tried to they put out one colorway and then they just flood the market with tons of them but they've kind of really stuck with this shoe in it this colorway they've not done anything else so far um which is quite a long maybe that's what they do with nike running shoes i'm not sure people someone else can probably in the comments let me know but I'm surprised that we haven't seen any more shoes from them or any other colorways of that particular model in the most part. But yeah, check it out if you're that way inclined.